U.S. Steel, once the largest company on Earth, is being sold for scrap. Thanks to a federal regulatory and trade agenda that is wiping out what remains of honest work. The once crown jewel of American manufacturing, founded in 1901 by Andrew Carnegie and linchpin of the arsenal of democracy, agreed to be acquired by Nippon Steel. Now, back in the 80s, when I grew up amid Ross Perot's giant sucking sound, this would have been the story of the year. But at this point, the loss of a manufacturing crown jewel is just another Tuesday. So first, the details. It's not a done deal. Climate groups are still trying to block it to wring out protection money from the steel industry. And John Fetterman promises to do what he can. They promise to keep headquarters in Pittsburgh, but of course they would promise that until the deal goes through. Bigger picture is why is it just another Tuesday that we lose a manufacturing crown jewel? And that's easy, a predatory federal government that imposes tens of thousands of regulations mandating everything from green rules, diversity-driven labor rules, and alleged quality rules that are frequently lobbied by large companies to shut down their smaller competitors. These costs sum to pretty shocking numbers. According to a recent study by the National Association of Manufacturers, federal regulation alone cost large manufacturers, that's more than 100 employees, an average of $25,000 per employee. That's just for regulations. And that's roughly half their salary. For smaller companies with fewer than 50 workers, it's more than double that at $50,000 per employee for federal regulations. In other words, they destroy literally more than the employees make. Put differently, it costs so much to run a factory in America that only a masochist would dare or a crony who's actually just milking taxpayers. The fact that regulations wipe out the little guy should not be surprising. That is the whole point of regulation. Indeed, one of the very first manufacturing regulations, the Meat Inspection Act of 1906, was specifically lobbied by large meat packers to cartelize and shut out the mom and pop butchers. Problem is, sure, the big guys take a 25 hit, the little guys take 50, they're gone. So far, so good. The big guys can have it all to themselves, but spot the problem. Foreigners do not pay 25, they do not pay 50, they pay nothing. They bounce merrily along, outcompeting our crony mega corporations that have lobbied themselves into oblivion. Eventually, like U.S. Steel, they get acquired, rewarding the very managers who bought the regulations that killed the company. When the smoke clears, the small guys are gone, the big guys are gone, but a whole lot of people made a whole lot of money making it happen. So what's next? Brought to you by Unchained, we are losing an entire way of life. The communities left behind spiral into oblivion. At best, the young flee. At worst, they turn to fentanyl or suicide. Yet Washington just keeps at it, figuring welfare payments will make up the gap while cutting trade deals that carry every last drop of water for Wall Street, Hollywood, or Pharma, but leave export access for manufacturers to wither on the vine. Okay, we'll be watching. See you next time.